For the first time since Edward Snowden disclosed the biggest batch of government secrets in American history, we now have names. What we've had for almost a year now since the Snowden revelations are documents revealing a massive surveillance program to collect the electronic communications and metadata of millions of Americans. And as shocking as those leaks were, what we did not know until today were the identities of any actual Americans who were being spied upon. Thanks to a three-month investigation by the website The Intercept, we now know of at least five Americans, all civilians, all Muslim or from Muslim backgrounds, whose email accounts were monitored by the NSA and FBI. As early as 2005, and at least up into 2008, the targets of federal government surveillance included, according to Intercept's investigation, five men who have all led highly public, outwardly exemplary lives, including the co-founder and executive director of the Council on American Islamic Relations, the nation's largest Muslim civil rights organization, a former Hill staffer and prominent attorney, seen here shaking hands with George W. Bush and Hillary Clinton, and the kicker, a former policy advisor in the Department of Homeland Security with security clearance under President George W. Bush and a one-time Republican candidate for the Virginia House of Delegates. How does it make me feel that I was surveilled during the, by the government? I mean, that's a, that's a very good question. I, I guess my big feeling is, I, you know, I just don't know why. I mean, I've done everything in my life um, to be patriotic. I mean, I, you know, served in the Navy, served in the government, served in a political administration, was active in my community. I was a very conservative, Reagan-loving Republican. I, I just don't know what's in my background. And if somebody like me could be surveilled, then, you know, some other people out there, I can only imagine, who are, uh, you know, under surveillance. Joining me now, Glenn Greenwald, founding editor of The Intercept and author of No Place to Hide, Edward Snowden, The NSA, and the U.S. Surveillance State. All right, Glenn, I've read through the piece, which I thought was really well done, uh, two or three times, and I can't figure out, <laughs> whether I'm being dense or it's just not there, whether these people were being surveilled with the presence of a FISA warrant or without a warrant. Can you help clear that up for me? The entire time, Chris, that we were talking to the NSA trying to get comment, they kept urging us not to publish any names on the grounds that all the spying that they do that's directed at Americans is done under the aegis of the FISA court. And we were scheduled to publish our story last week, and at the last minute, some DOJ officials started telling media outlets that at least one of the individuals, specifically Nahad Awad, who is the executive director of CARE, was actually surveilled without a FISA warrant. And so we repeatedly asked the NSA. They refused to tell us whether they're were warrants on all of these people or not, um, and so we just tinkered with our story a little to make to clear that that was uncertain. We certainly know they were spied, whether it was subject subject to a FISA warrant um, or some other theory uh, is is unknown. It seems to me the legal implications and policy implications um, matter a, a fair amount about whether a FISA warrant was there or not, because it's a question of whether the FISA process is actually working or whether it's just being there's there's an end run around it, right? Well, so there are two issues. One is that before the 2008 FISA law that was passed by a bipartisan Congress, what that law mostly did was increase the government surveillance powers by legalizing what had been the controversial Bush-Cheney warrantless eavesdropping program. But one of the protections that it provided was it said, anytime you want to target Americans, whether they're on the U.S. soil or not, you need a FISA warrant. Prior to that law, in mid-2008, the NSA, according to their documents, believed they could surveil Americans Americans outside of U.S. soil simply by getting a certification of the Attorney General. So it's possible that prior to this law they targeted people like Nahad Awad without getting a FISA warrant and they would have thought it was legal. They thought they only needed an Attorney General certification if the American was on foreign soil at the time they were being surveilled. It, it, it's striking that the, the five people that, that have identified in these files are all either Muslim, practicing Muslim or, or uh, of Muslim uh, heritage or Muslim backgrounds. There's this crazy memo, a 2005 document, uh, personnel are instructed how to properly fill out internal memos to justify FISA surveillance in the place where the person's name would go, where you would imagine they put something like John Doe, it's Identity Mohammed Raghead. What's your reaction to that? Yeah. 
You know, I think that provides crucial context to the story. I mean, Spencer Ackerman, when he was at Wired in 2011, uncovered a bunch of similar training material that taught FBI and other intelligence community officials to regard even moderate Muslims as being serious threats to national security. You know, when we think about the 60s and the 70s and the surveillance abuses then, we now think of it as clearly wrong because they were spying on people like anti-war protesters and civil rights activists. But at the time, there were a lot of people who believed that those kind of people, civil rights activists, anti-war protesters, anti-government critics, were a serious threat and wanted them surveilled. And I think that mindset has shifted after September 11th to our fellow citizens who are Muslim. And I think there's an institutional ethos pervading the intelligence community, parts of it, not all of it, um, that says that when Muslim Americans exercise their political rights guaranteed by the Constitution, you should regard that as threatening. Are you worried that you have now invited all sorts of hit jobs on these five people who are now going to go out and be like, well, they were up to something no good. You know, one of the important factors that we uh, took into account when deciding who we were going to report on was whether the people wanted to be reported on. Um, you know, there were a lot of people who I thought about reporting on who simply didn't want to be identified as a target because of that stigma. All five of these Americans, to their great credit, um, s said that they wanted to come forward and defend their rights, and, and it was purely by consent. Glenn Greenwald from The Intercept. Thanks so much. Thank you, Chris.